What a performance from Jared McCain on Saturday as the Duke Blue Devils defeat Florida State. Jared McCain ties the freshman scoring record. Oh boy, that was a lot of fun. Let's talk about it. Hi everybody, Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson, and it's so great to have you here with us on Monday, February 19th, 2024. A quick happy President's Day shout out to everyone here on this fine Monday. We're talking about Duke basketball and their win over Florida State this past weekend. Oh, boy, what a performance we saw from Jared McCain. The freshman ties, the Duke freshman scoring record that Zion Williamson previously had. That's good company for Jared McCain. We'll discuss his play, what it meant for Duke, how they can build off that moving forward, and two more road games coming up for the Blue Devils before they get the opportunity to return to the friendly confines of Cameron Indoor Stadium. On today's show, I can't wait to have the host of the Big J and Little J show, Jordan Mann, back here with us to talk about everything we saw in Duke basketball. However, if you have not done so already, please make sure that you follow and subscribe to Lockdown Blue Devils for free wherever it is that you get your podcasts. Do me a favor, take a moment to leave us a five-star rating and written review on the Apple Podcast platform if that's where you're listening. I want to give a five-star Friday shout-out this week. I keep saying that. We're going to be for real about it. A five-star Friday shout-out to anyone who leaves us a five-star rating and written review. And same goes for YouTube. If you're an everyday or out there watching us on YouTube, let me know down in the comments below. And let's give you a shout out as well on the program. Going to be excited to do that for you guys. For your support with Lockdown Blue Devils, it, uh, it's definitely noticed and really do appreciate you making us a part of your day each and every day. If you are watching on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, like this video, share it with your friends, all that jazz. Follow us on X at LO underscore Blue Devils. All right, enough talking for me. Let's bring him on in. It's our good friend, Jordan Mann. Again, the aforementioned Big J and Little J Show host. And, buddy, we saw quite the performance on Saturday. Duke picks up a win over Florida State thanks to 35, a 35 piece from the freshman Jared McCain. Yeah, I mean, I've always said, J.J., he needs double-digit double digit shot attempts. He shot 20 shots, and that's, <laughs> uh, that was my dream. That was my wet dream for Jared McCain. I mean, 35 points, efficient shooting, too, 8 of 11 from 3. And he was everywhere. He also had three steals when Duke needed him in the second half as well. He came up big on both sides of the floor for Duke. And the Jared McCain game, like you said, man, 39 minutes and 35 points. Just very happy and proud of him. For real, what a performance it was for Mr. McCain. We'll get to it a little bit later uh, when we talk about this and more of the individual performances because it is such a dominant game that Jared McCain had. Uh, but Duke was without Tyrese Proctor. We thought this could be a possibility as we got later in the week last week, of course, that Monday game that they had against Wake Forest, McCain had a late, or excuse me, Proctor was hit hard uh, and uh, left the game, thought maybe it could be a serious head injury, and it was. So he was in concussion protocol, did not travel with the team, and that's where we're at right now. So um, definitely excited to, uh, to, to talk about other guys stepping up in Proctor's absence namely Jared McCain. What did you make of that news when you found out? Yeah, I mean, like we've talked about, we kind of thought it could be a possibility, especially if he, he in fact, did have a concussion. So, obviously, flying on a plane, you just can't you can't do it when you have a concussion. you got to take it very easy. So, it makes sense why he didn't travel. And so, I'm curious to see if Miami, he'll be cleared. But to talk about the Florida State game, I was proud of McCain, obviously, stepping up, being aggressive, Roach doing his thing. 17 points on 5 of 12, but also I'm very proud of Caleb Foster. I know the stats don't really pop out if you're looking for stats, but he played 35 minutes for Duke, and Duke needed every minute from him at the point guard position or the guard position. And yet, I know he had five points, but he had four rebounds and three uh, assists. And 35 minutes, he was plus six on the floor. That's that's big. I mean, that's a numbers don't pop out, but you do the little things well, and that's how you get road wins from glue guys as Caleb Foster stepped up and did what he needed to do. 
Yeah, controlling the game, and Florida State is a team that obviously wanted to put a big win on their resume, and they would have done that had they been able to beat Duke on their home floor, but that was not to be. They had a, a, a little bit of a lead there early in the basketball game, got up by six, seven, eight points, but then Jared McCain really turned it on, started to make some shots, hit three consecutive threes on three straight possessions, which you don't see very frequently and that just really swung momentum, and Duke truthfully never looked back from there. Yeah, no, Jared McCain put Duke on his back, and Duke rode him as long as they could through the whole game, J.J., and that was that's massive. I mean, it's massive for to have a guy like that on Duke's roster, but he's one of a couple guys that you could say could do that. Like, I have full confidence that Roach could do the same thing for Duke in key moments of key games, and he's been proven to do that as well. So seeing McCain do that, on top of how good he's played, like we've talked about the last couple months, to really put the cherry on top at Florida State was awesome to see. No doubt about it. Excited to see what Duke can do this weekend, or this week, excuse me, as they take on Miami on Wednesday uh, on the road, and then they're also on the road this upcoming weekend when they take on Wake Forest. On the defensive end of the floor, I thought Duke was pretty great there as well. I mean, again, early Florida State started red hot from the floor, and that's a big reason why – they were able to kind of get that early lead in this one. Uh, but then Duke's defense kind of settled in, locked down, forced really tough shots. And uh, I thought the defense was a big part in why Duke was able to win a game like this. Oh, yeah, for sure. The defense, I mean, they forced 14 turnovers, and that's massive. Uh, Florida State did shoot 49% from the field, but they are 4 14 from three. So Duke made it hard on the perimeter. And if you're going to beat Duke, you got to knock down some threes, as we've seen in Duke's losses like against Pittsburgh, Blake Henson couldn't miss, and other losses. Teams got hot from three. Duke did a really good job running them off the line, make them go 4-14 and make them work for it. Look, Florida State has historically, and just like this year, is a long athletic team like we talked about too. I mean, they had like three or four guys that are 6'10", so not only offensively can they get to the rim and finish over top of Duke, but right. defensively they made it hard for Duke. I mean, Duke had 17 turnovers. Phil Palski, Roach, and McCain combined for 15 of them. So – they made it hard for Duke's best players and for Duke to score 76 points and they had 17 turnovers and Forest they had nine block shots. Uh, just a great team win for Duke. Just a great conference road win for Duke. We love it. You mentioned a lot of numbers right there. We're going to continue to dive into the numbers, dive into the box score, and of course you'll be able to visually see this if you're watching us on YouTube as well. And we will do that when we return after our first time out here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. All right, Lockdown Blue Devils here today is brought to you by our friends over at LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the place to hire. It gives you access to the professionals you can't find anywhere else and does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. What you can do, post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, let's move forward here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. I'm JJ Jackson alongside my pal Jordan Mann from the Big J and Little J show. And we're going to take a look at the box score. Once again, if you're watching us on YouTube, you've got a glimpse here of team numbers for both of these teams. And We'll call them out if you're listening to us in the podcast platform. Jared McCain, 35 points, 12 of 20 shooting from the floor, 8 of 11 from three-point range, 3 of 4 from the free throw line, and did grab four rebounds, one assist, five turnovers, and 39 minutes of action. Seven of those three-point shots, Jordan, were made in that first half. 25 points in the first half was a Duke freshman scoring record for points in one half of play. He tied Zion for the game total, but a record for Jared McCain, 25 of his 35 were in the first half, and he was making everything to begin the game. Oh, yeah. I mean, what you saw in the first half, you knew wasn't going to really correlate in the second half because Florida State's main adjustment this, at halftime was do not let him get another shot. <laughs> and so for him to score 10 points, I know he had one assist, but he made 
a lot of the right reads with the ball in his hand as well. Obviously, the five turnovers, look, when you have the ball in your hands that many times and you're the guy that they're trying to eliminate, especially in the second half, you're going to have turnovers. And so, like you said, I mean, he just – he adapted very well in the game because, like you said, he had seven made threes in the second half or first half. So he only made one in the second because Florida State was running him off the line. What did he do? He went to the rim. He either got fouled or he made layups around the rim. And that's just – he's something he's improved this whole season like we talked about. And just to see the way he can score in variety, man, it's just – he's a talented player. He's just a special player for Duke. Yeah, the 20th win of the season for the Duke Blue Devils, who are now 20 and 5 on the year. Yet another win, where, or season, I should say, where Duke's able to get to that 20 win total, their 11th win in conference play, and he gets a nine point victory over Florida State, thanks in large part to the 35 piece that Jared McCain was able to go out there and score. What else? When you look at these numbers, I know you mentioned Caleb Foster a little bit earlier, but uh, how about the play of Jeremy Roach, Jordan? Yeah, I mean, Roach is just, dude, he just – he runs this offense so smoothly. Like, Florida State did a great job of making things difficult for Duke. Uh, before we got on the show, I was, like, talking about the start of the second half. I feel like the first six or seven minutes of the second half was just sloppy, not only for Duke but Florida State as well. I mean, it seemed like Duke had a stretch, J.J., where it was a turnover, turnover, block shot around the rim because Florida State had two or three guys going up for with Phil Powski or Mark Mitchell going up at the rim – or another turnover, and when Duke needed a bucket, Roach got to his spot right there, the elbow jumper, and would hit it. And when Duke needed a bucket, Jeremy Roach would just pull up from 15 and knock it down for to make it a two-possession game, a three-possession game. Like, as much as Duke struggled in that stretch, he always made sure to hit the big bucket for Duke to basically prevail to make sure Florida State wasn't going to come back and beat Duke in the second half. Yeah, no doubt about that. Uh, I, I think that Roach, again, to, to have 17 points – on two of four from three-point range, five of 12 from the floor to knock his free throws down the way he did, sharing the basketball with those four assists. Like, we take it for granted once again. And I'm sorry, Jared McCain did a little outshine just a little bit more. But, man, we're so fortunate that Roach is on our side uh, with what he's able to do. So, uh, really, really fired up with that one for sure. Any other numbers that are jumping out to you when you're looking at this, Jordan? Uh, not necessarily jumping out in a good way. Well, I guess it could be a good and bad way. Like obviously on the previous show, the big J and little J in a previous episode, I've talked about Phil Powski, how well he played against Wake Forest. That was one of his better games. Obviously he struggled against Florida state, six turnovers, four fouls, three of seven from the field. Just looked like he couldn't get it going. But with him being this inconsistent JJ, I do think like it makes Duke a better overall team because you're seeing, McCain step up yet again, being the lead guy for Duke in a situation where Phil Powski just cannot get it going. And it's not doom or gloom, though, for Duke when he's not getting it going. Like, Duke's not screwed if Phil Powski scores eight points. You know what I mean? Like, Duke went on the road, beat a Florida State team where Duke always, not always, but has lost to Florida State at Florida State multiple times that we've known about. And for Phil Powski to score only eight points and Duke to secure a road win the way they did with McCain and – uh Jeremy Roach being the only two scorers in double figures, just it's good for Duke. That's what I'm trying to tell people. It's a good thing for Duke that Duke's figuring out different ways to win with Phil Powski being non-existent. No doubt about that. Yeah, I, I think the fact that, uh, yeah, Flip did have a quiet game, not an inefficient game like he's had previously, but just a quiet game uh, and able to still be uh, – or Duke still be able to overcome that, so to speak. Right. The foul trouble – is something you still want to, you know, improve on if you're Filipowski. Six turnovers is brutal. It's tough. Uh, but but even still, Duke finds a way to win. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, he's he just made some tough plays. I mean, it's just unfortunately it's been some good with Flip and then some bad with Flip game by game. But at the end of the day, that's just what the season has become. It's just he's consistently inconsistent. And but with that other guys have stepped up in his absence when he just hasn't been the go-to guy for Duke. And that's okay. Like, as it's a team game for a reason, JJ. So just because he's off doesn't mean Duke's going to be off. And that's a recipe for success for Duke. No doubt about that. Big win for the Blue Devils, 76-67, the final score over Florida State. I do want to uh, also make sure we give a shout-out to our guy, Ryan Young, who played 15 minutes. Uh, out there on the floor. There have been a couple of games recently where he was not a factor for the Blue Devils, but did get some extended run with Filipowski in foul trouble uh, early in the first half. Ryan Young should have scored. 
They missed a goaltending call on a really nice post move that Ryan had there in the first half. So I want to give him some love because he should be in the uh, the scorebook there. Yeah, and shout out to Ryan Young. Duke had one block uh, against Florida State, and it was Ryan Young. So <laughs> you I mean, if you had that, congratulations on your bingo card. And also, <laughs> Sean Stewart played four minutes, had four rebounds. The dude's just an energizer bunny. Like, the guy just comes in and is like, I'm going to go crash the board. And that's what he does. I mean, he is so good at that. Two offense rebounds, two defense rebounds in four minutes. That's what John Shire asked for from media timeout to media timeout. Without a doubt. Really excited to see what Duke can do moving forward when they take on Miami. Let's have a few more thoughts on that game in particular. What's next for the Blue Devils? Uh, And and we'll begin to wrap up that conversation once again with our good friend Jordan Mann, who's here with us on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. But first, one more timeout. Lockdown Blue Devils here today is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. That's right. FanDuel is the absolute best, and you want to get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers will get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. You could bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. So do us a favor. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel is an official partner of the NBA. All right, final few moments here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils. J.J. Jackson alongside my pal Jordan Mann, the Big J and Little J show. Tell me about it. What is that show? If people aren't aware of it, um, tell them where they can find it and uh, what all you guys talk about, Jordan. Yeah, so we talk about uh, Duke basketball and Duke football. Obviously, it's the basketball season right now. We'll record Tuesday this week and then hopefully have it out either Tuesday night or first thing Wednesday morning, recapping the Duke Forest State game and previewing the Duke Miami game and also Duke and Wake Forest this upcoming Saturday. So a lot of things happening at the Big J and Lil J show. You can find it on Apple and Spotify and also on YouTube. Uh, the username is at Jman underscore and you can find the Big J and Lil J show there as well. That's epic. Go check it out. I endorse it a lot. Connor O'Neill is part of the program there. He's the Big J uh, in the equation and a uh, really good conversation and banter between those two guys. So I couldn't endorse that more. And uh, Jordan's on X at J-Man's Takes. He's got a lot of them. He's known to clip some of the highlights uh, from our show in particular. And, yeah, people should follow you on social media. I appreciate the plug, JJ. But, yes, (laughs) at J-Man's Takes and at Big J and Little J Show also on X. And and also at DukeFBFans underscore RIP to the original account that is permanently suspended by Elon Musk. But it was a good run while it lasted in football season. Yeah, we'll have to make a recovery at some point on that one or continue to build the new uh, the new one. So, all right, Miami is up next for the Duke basketball team. A road test once again for the Blue Devils. Uh, concerned a little bit going into Florida State, but Duke was able to overcome that. Big question that everybody has is whether or not Tyrese Proctor – will be available Monday morning. John Shire uh, says that Proctor is getting better, but has not been able to go through practice just yet. They're practicing later today on Monday. Um, So we'll see whether or not he's able to do those things. But as is tradition with injuries in the Duke basketball program, we're likely not going to find out until right before the game gets started on Miami. But keep in mind an important piece of the reporting, given that Tyrese Proctor is in concussion protocol, Duke has to fly. They've got to take a flight, high altitude, not the best formula with concussion protocol. So if this is even on the line, I just don't think Proctor will be available once again for this Miami game. Yeah, that and as a guy that is, if people know me, are very familiar with concussions, as I've had quite a few in my heyday, that not only that, but sensitivity to light, sensitivity to noise. So even if he was cleared to fly, it's just like, hey, like, do the lights bother you? Can you look at a screen for a certain amount of time? So there's a whole process that comes along with that as well. But hopefully P- Proctor will be okay and he can travel with the team at the least. Even if he doesn't play, that would be a good sign for Duke to see, hey, he could probably play, possibly play against Wake Forest. But it's small steps with the concussion protocol, so we'll see. But even if he doesn't, JJ, I mean, it's just a, it's a big test. Obviously, Florida State was a big test, and now it's an even bigger test. And uh, Miami – is an underachieving team this year, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're not a bad team. Underachieving means they have the talent to be good. They just have not put it together. 
And we just hope that it's not going to happen against Duke where they finally put it together this season. No doubt. Miami is 15 and 11 overall on the season, six and nine in ACC play. Uh, the Hurricanes have, or excuse me, Duke in this one, according to the ESPN basketball analytics, has a 67.7% chance to win this contest. So very, very, very intrigued to see how this one plays out. Miami, like Florida State, has been a team that's had a lot of size over the years. That's no different once again this season, uh, and they're always led by good guard play. So if Proctor's not available, I don't know that you can necessarily ask McCain to repeat the performance like he had this past game against Florida State, but need him to have a big one. Jeremy Roach continued to do his thing, and Caleb Foster set the tone because, man, Miami's got a good backcourt like always. Yeah, they have a good backcourt. They're deep, and basically from guys that play 20 minutes and up, they're shooting 35% or higher from three. So those guys can just pull from anywhere, and that's that's a recipe for disaster for Duke on the road because I know people like to say, well, everybody hits threes against Duke. Well, this is a team that at home is going to be – up to play Duke, and they're going to hit some tough shots where you're just going to be shrugging your shoulders like, hey, it's good defense. It's just – it is what it is at Miami. So, you got to shake those off and force hard ones like you did at Florida State to where they struggle with hitting those tough threes. This is a Miami basketball team that currently has lost four consecutive ACC games. That is so incredibly rare in Jim Laranaga's tenure as the head coach for the Hurricanes. They so desperately want to pick up a win against a top 10 Duke team uh, that would greatly benefit where they're at kind of in the net rankings and um, those standings as they're trying to paint a better picture for themselves come NCAA tournament play. Because we know Miami's had several Elite Eight runs in recent years. They want to get back to the postseason. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's so strange. Four straight losses in conference play. Four yeah. straight ACC losses uh, for Miami, including losing to Boston College this past weekend. Yeah, Boston College is an interesting team. I think I like their new coach, and I think that he's doing a fine job there. But what to sum up this Miami team, JJ, it is just very weird because they've they lost to Virginia. They scored 38 points at Virginia. They lost 60 to 38, which if you lose about 22 points to UVA, it might as well be 45 points with the way they pace the play. But then they bounced back from that loss and almost upset UNC at home they lost by three 75 to 72 so basically what i'm trying to say is you don't know which miami team is going to show up you're going to either see the team that just rolls over like they did against virginia or they're going to fight to the bitter end like they did against carolina and so they like we talked about their guard plays really good they they can score it they just sometimes they don't want to play defense so duke's going to get some easy shots especially their guards against their guards and hopefully duke knocks down those shots because I have talked about J.J. McCain helped his shooting splits on the road against Florida State, but as a team, Duke really struggles shooting the ball away from Cameron. Undoubtedly. We'll see how Duke responds, what they can do on uh, Wednesday night at Miami, see if they can keep this winning streak going. Uh, they've been pretty solid since that loss to UNC in Chapel Hill. Jordan, it's amazing chatting with you each and every week. One more time, promote your work. Where can people follow you? Yeah, you can follow me on X at J Man's Takes and uh, Big J and Little J Show. You can find the podcast on Apple and Spotify. Follow you uh, subscribe to my YouTube at J Man underscore. Not only is the Big J and Little J Show there, but I make video edits for Duke and other athletes involved, like sports videos. So yeah, just check out the content. I hope you guys like and subscribe. And as always, JJ, I appreciate you always having me on. No doubt. How was the slam dunk contest in your eyes this past weekend? I just think they got to get rid of. I think they have to just make the, let the G League guys have the spotlight because the G League year in and year out has a way better dunk contest than the NBA. Sure. <laughs> so Mac McClung came from the G League, but even if you take him out, the other G League guys are unbelievably athletic. So just give him give them that spotlight, and whoever wins the dunk contest for the G League, they make they get like 25 grand or whatever the prize money can be. And that's life-changing money for a guy in the G league, especially if they're not a two-way guy. So that's my take on it. Just make it a G league thing where those guys are hungry. I put you on the spot there, but I knew one, you would have a response. And two, I've been seeing a lot of uh, dunk contest edits on my feed the last 72 hours. And I'm like, that is definitely something that J man would make the greatest dunk contest edit uh, yeah. that's ever existed. So maybe I, there's I, an idea for you, man. Yeah, and if, like, the Aaron Gordons and Zach Levines of the world of this new generation want to dunk, then let 
then do it. But if right. you're not, if you can't get the big names or even mediocre names to do the dunk contest, then just give it to the G League guys, give them that platform because it'll make the game even better for people to follow the G League affiliates of the NBA teams. Speaking of dunks, Kyle Filipowski, Mark Mitchell, way more than they had a season ago. They are trending in the right direction. Love watching those guys play above the rim. Jordan, as always, thanks for being on the show, and we'll do this again soon, okay? Appreciate you, brother. All right, that's Jordan Mann joining us here on today's episode of Lockdown Blue Devils. Great stuff, as always, from him, and please go check out his work. Once again, subscribe to Lockdown Blue Devils for free wherever it is that you get your podcasts. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Locked On Blue Devils. That'll do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you tomorrow. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.